All right, so hopefully by this time of your math lives, solving by elimination is second nature. So I'm not going to go through it, but get opposites with your coefficients, add, delete, a eliminate a variable, and solve. Uh, same with this. To add or subtract, you have to have the exact same dimensions. Just do order of operations, like do parentheses first, you know, same thing as you would in any basic operation, solving, simplifying, whatever. Uh, when you multiply, this is actual matrix multiplication. This is not scalar, so do row by column. Remember, you have to uh, have the inside ones match. So row by column means that three rows, two columns, two rows, two columns. These have to match to be able to multiply. These represent what your answer will be. And then you are just going to multiply your row by your column, add the products, row by column, add the products. When you run out of columns, go to the next row. And you will have your matrix multiplication. Gauss Jordan, your favorite. All right. So this is where you're going to set up your augmented matrix, right? Negative two, four, zero. All right, so remember with Gauss-Jordan, with Gauss-Jordan, you can um, switch any rows. You can add rows. You can multiply rows. By adding, I mean you can add one row to the other. And by multiplying, I mean you can multiply all the way across. So like every single element can be multiplied by two and then added to another row. Your goal here is to get something like this. These will be your answers when you are done. You can't, you are free to get one of those and then back plug if you want to, right? That's up to you. I just typically find it once I have them like that, then I can solve, but... You are free to do just where you get just one variable and then back plug it, or you can go ahead and get the whole thing. It doesn't matter. For determinants, two by two is pretty basic. You multiply this diagonal, subtract that diagonal. In this case, he's zero, but multiply your diagonals and subtract. There are two ways to do a three by three. The first method, you can shift your first two rows over and you can multiply your diagonals, right? Those, and then you will, you will, those are the products. And then you will subtract the other diagonals, the products of those. So that method is pretty straightforward. And you're just gonna do that with each of the diagonals. Make sure when you do this group that you add those before you do the subtraction. So make sure you group around it and do that addition first before you do the subtraction here or you'll mess that up, okay? The other method is to use um, your cofactors. That's usually the method that I do, but you know it doesn't matter to me which way you do it. Um, if you do cofactors, uh, there's a really easy one here. I would probably use this column right there if I did cofactors, because I could. It's really going to zero everything else except this five right here, and you could just do the two by two here. So, if you do cofactors, you would have something like this: five times that determinant because you have two zeros. <coughs> So if I had two zeros anywhere on this guy, I would do cofactors versus the diagonals. But you're free to do it whichever way you want to. So inverse, you are going to do one over the determinant. You're going to multiply that through switching these diagonals and negating those diagonals. So my first step in inverse is to find the determinant. So I'm going to say 24 plus 100. They gave me a ginormous determinant here. All right. 
So you're going to put 1 over 124. You are going to multiply that through to what happens when I switch the 6 and 4 and negate my other diagonal. Um, just multiply it through. So I have 4 over 124, negative 10 over 124, 10 over 124, and 6 over 124. When you are just finding the inverse, you do want to go ahead and reduce. If not, you either want to distribute that guy at the end, or you want to um, reduce at the end, because you have common factors there. So we get 1 over 31... So this is my answer right here for that inverse. So solving using inverses, um, not too bad. You gotta think of it like this. We have a coefficient matrix. We have our answer matrix, right? And then we have our constant matrix over here. So I really need to find the inverse of this guy and multiply it by that guy. Um, you always have to do it in that order. So you want to do what I just did over there. You want to find the inverse, and you want to do row by column multiplication through to that guy. Um, so, you know, the process looks the same. We have negative 30 minus 6. So I have negative 1 over 36. Switch these guys. Negate these guys, right? <clears throat> you are free to do the row by column multiplication first, and then multiply by 1 over 36. Or you can multiply by 1 over 36 and do the row by column. It literally doesn't matter which way you do it. It's multiplication. Okay, <coughs> Scalar can be done at any time. So if you want to do the row by column first, do that, and then put that 1 over 36 through. Um, once you do that, you should have this 2 by 1, and that will be your x, y. So if I were to do it, I would have 5 times 4 plus negative 3 times 14... And then I would have 2 times 4, negative 6 times 14. And then um, add those up. So I have negative 22, negative 76. And then I still have to multiply by that 1 over 36. So I'm going to say a positive 22 over 36, a positive 76 over 36, and then reduce it. So this reduces by 2. I get 11 over 18. This reduces by 4. I get... No. No. That helps to do your positives and negatives. There we go. That's going to be 92. Better? Yes. There we go. So this is going to be 92 over 36. Now it reduces by 4. 23 over 9. So my answer is that xy. 11 over 18. y is 23 over 9. All right? This guy, it says use technology to solve by inverse. So I need to see that you set this up. So I need to see the 0, 4, negative 4, the 6, 3, 1, the negative 2, negative 5, and 5, okay? I need to see that you set up your equation. And then you can calculate this inverse in your calculator. So I would put this matrix in my calculator, and I would put this matrix in my calculator, okay? And um, let's say I labeled this one, and I labeled this another thing then you can use your calculator to do that one inverse times that one, and you should get your answer, your X, Y, Z answer. So if it says use technology, you're going to use those capabilities to calculate that inverse versus doing it yourself. Kramer's rule, you'll notice it says manual determinant. So for Kramer's rule, you're going to have a coefficient determinant. You're going to have an X determinant. And you are going to have a y determinant. To solve, you will put your x determinant divided by your coefficient. 
your y determinant divided by your coefficient, and that will be your xy. All right? You really only have to do, potentially do one of them. So I want to see that you set up the 3 by 3, 5, negative 1, 0, negative 3, negative 3, negative 6, 6, 1, and 4. You can calculate the determinant manually if you want to. I mean, I mean technology. So you can use this to find the determinant in your calculator, right? But then I need to see that you set up another one. If you're missing one like the first one is, solve for x or y, and then I don't mind if you backfill it in so that you don't have to enter those. So if I were solving this by technology, I would put this guy into my calculator and I would find the determinant of this guy. Divide these out to solve for x. So x is going to be the determinant of my first one by the determinant of my second one. So once you have x, then you're free to backfill if you want to, okay? If you have all three of all of them, you'll have to do it at least twice before you can backfill because you need an x and a y. Right? But in this case, you only need one variable to backfill because one of them's missing from one of your equations. So when I'm doing this, my first step is to factor this guy right here. You can take an x out, and then I'm looking for factors of 15 that subtract to give me 2. That's going to be a negative 5 and a positive 3. So those are my factors that I'm looking for. And then you're really just going to have an a over x a b over x minus 5, and a c over x plus 3. So the goal here is to multiply by what you're missing. So my a is going to multiply by x minus 5 and x plus 3. My b is going to multiply by x and x plus 3. And my c is going to multiply by x and x minus 5. Okay, just what are they missing is what you're trying to do here. So I have ax squared minus 2ax minus 15. Yep, a15. Here I have bx squared plus 3bx. And here I have cx squared minus 5cx. <coughs> I'm not going to give you one like this, but just so you know, when you have something like this, they did long division first. Oh, that's yeah. And then you get a two all by itself, and then you get another guy, and then you break him down. But I'm not going to do that to you. Hopefully these are easy by this point in your life, your linear programming ones, right? Um, the first thing I ever set up is my objective function. So I'm trying to maximize volume. So when I'm looking for my objective function, I go back and find everything that has to do with volume. Um, uh, so we'll read through. You have filing cabinets. Cabinet X costs $10 a unit, requires six square feet of floor place, holds eight cubic feet of files. So um, eight cubic feet is what it holds. That's my storage. Cabinet Y costs 20, requires eight square feet of floor space, and holds 12 cubic feet of files. So that is actually my objective function. So my storage is what I'm trying to maximize, and that's going to be 8x plus 12y. They kind of set up my x and y for me. Normally I would say you need to tell me x is this variable, y is this variable, but they actually named it cabinet x and cabinet y, so <laughs> that's kind of built in. Then you're going to see your limitations. Your limitations are money. So we have constraints of 10x plus 20y. And then look for that somewhere else. You have been given $140. So that has to be less than the total amount that you have or equal to. You also have a limitation on floor space. So this requires 6 square feet of floor space. So that's 6x. This other guy requires 8 square feet of floor place. That's 8y less than or equal to my total square footage that I have, which is 72. Um, 
So you're going to graph these to see where they, they cross each other, right? Um, obviously, you're in the first quadrant because you can't have negations. Um, you can graph by uh, x and y intercepts here. That's how I always graph these. My x-intercept for this top guy is going to be um, 14, 0. My y-intercept is going to be 0, 7, right? And I'll pop those in. This second one, my x-intercept is going to be, what, 12, 0. My y is going to be 0, 9, right? <clears throat> and so I'll graph those. When you only have two lines, it's pretty simple. Your intercepts... Um, but you have to figure out which one. So which one's hits lower if it's underneath, um, which means like when I graph this line here, my X. So here's my 14 and the 37, right? So that's that guy there. <coughs> it's underneath it. So whatever I create is what's going to happen there. Graph this guy, it's gonna be 12 in nine. So it's not all of your intercepts. This is why you wanna graph it and make sure you're understanding what's happening. Uh, when I figure out how I'm gonna maximize this guy, my intercepts that I'm actually worried about are these two and then where they cross here. Zero, zero is not gonna maximize anything, right? So. You don't have to test zero, zero for me. I'm not going to look that you tested it. Um, zero, zero is just going to give you zero. But you do want to test the other ones. I color coded this for a reason. So like I know I'm going to test the point zero, seven. I know I'm going to test the point 12, zero. And then I'm going to test this point where they cross. This is nice and pretty. So it crossed at one that I'm pretty sure of. But <clears throat> if for some reason it doesn't cross in a nice pretty one like that, um, then you will want to use some form of elimination to figure out, like elimination, substitution. Typically in these, you're going to use elimination, but you do want to know exactly where they cross so that when you plug these guys in, um, then you know exactly what to put in. This guy was nice in small numbers. They're not all that nice. Sometimes you're using decimals, right? So... If for any reason it doesn't cross nicely, you want to use another form other than graphing. Uh, once you've done that, plug these three into this and see which one gives you the most, the maximum, and what it is. So you'll want to plug each one of these in. You want to say what gives me the maximum. Once you find it, um, then you will want to tell me two things, right? you'll want to say the maximum, and I think this one is, the maximum volume is 100 square feet, or cubic feet, is it cubic that I'm talking about? Yes, cubic feet, and it happens at um, eight of model X and three of model Y. Right, so this is what your answer will look like. You'll tell me what the max is and where it happens.